In our last tutorial, we learned how to declare a variable, and the data type we used was int, which stands for integer and which means a whole number. Integer is one of eight primitive data types, and even though we are not going to use all of them in our beginning tutorials, we will be working with some of them. So I thought it would be a good time to go through them. We will go more in-depth concerning each one later on, but for now, a brief explanation might be okay. It's not the most interesting tutorial, but it's something you just have to know something about. Now, we have eight primitive data types. Five of these have to do with whole numbers. We have byte, short, int, long, and then we have something called char. Now, we'll keep char on the sideline for a bit. These first four represent integers, and they represent different ranges of numbers, or put another way, the range of values that they store. Let's uh, take a look at byte, and byte uses this range of numbers, minus 128 through the negative numbers up to zero and through the positive numbers all the way up to and including 127. Short uses these numbers all the way from approximately minus 32,000 and all the way up to 32,000 in the positive range. As you can see, these are positive and negative whole numbers. The integer int is the one most commonly used and what I would call the standard or default. And if you look at the range, it goes into the negatives at over 2 billion and into the positives at over 2 billion. And that's one of the reasons why it's the default. And if you need something that uses even more numbers, then we have long and I'm not even going to try to tell you how much this is. The range of the integers correlates to the amount of space they need to store numbers. And let's take a look at that. Byte needs one byte to store these numbers. And short needs two bytes. Int needs four bytes and long needs 8 bytes. And as you can see here, int is half the size of long, and short is half the size of int, and so on. And right now we're saying 8 bytes of uh, memory. But uh, let's just remember that uh, 8 bits is a byte, and sometimes you might hear 64 bits. We'll stick to the bytes. But keep it in mind. Let's uh, write the number 95 here. And this number could uh, be a byte, or short, or int, or long. It all depends on what we want it to be. Because right now, this number can go into any of these uh, ranges that we see in front of us. But let's uh, say this much. If for some reason you need to write a program that uses as little memory as possible, consider using byte or short. And if you need to go way past 2 billion, long is the integer to use. And you could argue that why use an integer to store the number 95 when you can use a byte and save 4 times the space. Well, for now we're going to use integer and we'll get back to examples where we discuss when byte and short, for example, would be appropriate to use. Now, the char integer deals with whole numbers as the others we have talked about. And I've looked around a little bit in my school books and the internet, and I see it categorized as part of the other integers and by itself, but we'll categorize it as a fifth integer. Now, the reason we kept it on the sideline before is 
that even though it has to do with whole numbers, it deals with characters. And this character could be a letter, digit, punctuation, a symbol, and more. Now, the computer can't store anything but numbers, so each letter has to have its own number. And Java uses the Unicode encoding, and with two bytes available, it can handle or store 65,536 different signs. Examples would be the capital A, which is represented by the number 65, and that's where our alphabet begins when it comes to capital letters. And when it comes to small letters, uh, the A is represented by the number 97, and the, the number itself, 7, is in Unicode encoding the number 55 and the dollar sign is uh, 36. We'll get back to this uh, and how we work with the char in a few tutorials. I'll go through the details again when we start using this primitive data type. Okay, we are um, moving on. We have discussed the integers and now we have come to the floating point numbers, like fractional parts. I'll be calling these for decimal numbers. They work the same as um, integers when it comes to the ranges. Float is uh, less and uh, double is more. The default is uh, double. And here you can see that uh, float takes up f 4 bytes and uh, double takes up 8 bytes and the number ranges are approximately plus minus 10 with uh, minus 38 as uh, the exponent all the way up to uh, plus 38 as the exponent when it comes to float and uh, 308 in double. In our next tutorial we'll start using uh, numbers like uh, 3.2 which we will define as uh, a double. Now these uh, numbers are uh, pretty accurate but should not be used for currency or financial software. They are not that accurate and we'll get back to that later on. Our last uh, primitive data type is uh, boolean and it can hold only two values and those values are true or false and that about wraps it up when it comes to uh, primitive data types for now we've had a brief explanation and we'll start using some of these uh, primitive data types uh, very soon and already in our next tutorial we'll start using uh, double Okay, I um, I uh, hope you uh, enjoyed the tutorial as much as you can uh, enjoy this stuff. But it's just something you need to know. Okay, until next time.